What's up guys, welcome to Daily Grey. I appreciate that it's probably very loud in here. Also, the things on the floor. Sweeping brush, botch of dog food, agitation collar, wipes for the floor. They're not just there for the shits and giggles, we've just been using them. As you can see, Khaleesi is on the treadmill. Black is in the box. Black will be going on next. Like I say, I do appreciate it's probably immensely loud in here with the treadmill running, the laptop going, all of that jazz. Um, I just wanted to check in, start the vlog. Today, these guys are getting run on the treadmill because me and Misha are going for a date night in York tonight. Um, so they've already been out and worked, and now I'm just burning off any last energy that's possibly in there. So when we go out, they just sleep. It becomes an easy night then, doesn't it? Hop up, keep going, keep going. As you can see, someone is getting tired. Can I zoom in on this? No, I can't. Um, so. I'm gonna finish running her. I'll probably do a quick sped up video of a flack on there. Um, we'll get to it. We'll get to the rest of the day. Office work, bits and bats to do, date night tonight, looking forward to it. Should be good. I am officially the worst vlogger ever to have graced this planet. I didn't film anything yesterday, including date night. But we did go and watch Venom, and it was very, very good. Um, so I recommend watching that. I am not a film guy, for anyone that knows me. I've seen like 10 films in my entire life. It's just not my bag. Um, but Misha knows that I thoroughly enjoy Spider-Man. And Venom was obviously a spin-off to that. As it happens, it wasn't really anything to do with Spider-Man, which is weird. Um, so, yeah, it was really good. It was a very good film. Van Keys. Time to go train. However, currently pissing it down. Pissing it down marginally less than it was, but still not nice. Um, I'll get some footage though. It's not raining bad enough for, um, for us to be concerned about cameras getting wet and stuff. So, time to go and train the dog. Sorry I didn't film anything yesterday. We just sat doing office work, really. Um, and then we had date night. Not a lot I could film. I could have filmed date night, obviously, but... It's just nice to not film sometimes. It's nice to have a bit of my life kept as my life. Time to go train the dogs. So, a couple of days have gone past since I last filmed. Maybe like a whole day and a bit. Um, loads of shit has gone on. And we're close to resolving it. It's not directly to do with me, um, but I will <coughs> name everyone involved, except the victims involved. I will name the trainer involved. Trainer. Um, some of you have seen the post on my Facebook. Those of you who haven't, you're in for a real treat here. So, me and Big Ladder here. Big lad who pulled his cone off 
yesterday and rechewed his hotspot so he's now back in a corner all the time just as it was healing. This is the problem with hotspots. The closer they are to healing, the itchier they get. If the dog gets hold of them, they just rip them to pieces again. Um, I mean, it's no biggie, it's just, oh, hello. As you can see, he's, he's completely happy and content with himself. Um, I need to, like, go get fuel, go to pets at home. Don't do it, don't do it, there he goes. I'm trying to itch it now. I need to go get fuel, go to pets at home, and go to the field. So I think I'm going to give you this whole breakdown story when I'm in the van. Um, mainly because this is going to be long. So prepare for a ramble. Right, so what we're going to have to do is break this down into parts of this journey. So, the first part of this journey, I'm going to get fuel. I got an email off um, a client, an academy member, um, saying, basically, she's got a one-to-one -one session booked with me as well, you know, as well as being an academy member. She's like, I need to cancel my session. So I immediately learned, I'm like, yeah, no problem. Um, my dog's had a chance to go and work for the MOD. Bing, 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 the alarm bells are going immediately. MOD don't take sippy dogs on, as a rule, unless they're exceptionally good. Um, and it has to come from, you know, a commissioned officer in the um, vet car. So immediately, alarm bells are ringing, and I'm like, who, why, when, where? Oh, I've already given the dog over. Um, this woman's got a Master's of Science. She works with the military. She works with the police. Um, you know, she's got fucking 25,000 letters after her name. So I'm like, cool, send me a website. Um, this sounds amazing. I, I obviously want to know this woman if I don't already. And if I don't, somebody I know will. You know, if they're in if they're in this industry, I have loads of friends that work with the military, work with the police, training dogs, etc., supplying dogs, prisons. Um, so she's like, yeah, I'll send the thing over. Anyway, I get this, this website, Gemma Sankey, MSC. And I'm like... Okay, I've never heard of this woman. So I rang around real quick and nobody's heard of her. Um, I spoke to a serving vet corps guy. I spoke to people in the prisons. I spoke to people in the police. Nobody's ever heard of this woman. Um, so the vet corps guy went to the powers that be and were like, do we work with this woman? Nope. Doesn't work with the military. Same with the police. Doesn't work with the police. So I'm like, okay, um, you've been mugged off. She basically told this woman, she told my client that it was a veterinary, she's a veterinary behaviourist as well, by the way. Well, titles herself as such, you'll see in a minute why that's not true. So, the vets referred her to this woman um, for her behavioural problems, completely normal. She told my client that the dog was far too aggressive and unsafe to live in normal life and therefore must go with her to work with the MOD. I'm like, you've just had your pants down, she's charged you 750 quid to take your dog off here. So obviously this is just a case of vulnerability um, to, to professional powers. You know, when you go to the doctor, you don't, most people don't question when they say, oh, you need this, they just go, okay. Because who the fuck am I to argue? If he says I need this, then cool. I didn't do nine years at med school. Um, so anyway, we started digging. She's been under investigation by the ASA, the Advertising Standards Agency, for falsifying her qualifications. Um, so she said she worked with PetBC and ASAB, ASBA, two canine governing bodies, you know, they, they are what they are, they're not my thing, but hey, um, they said they had never heard of her, there's no sign of her on their records, and um, the ASA ruled um, in the plaintiff's favour and told her to take all these qualifications down or further action would be taken. Anyway, these qualifications are still all up on her website. So at this point, the alarm bells are majorly, majorly fucking ringing at this point. Um, I've got other dog trainers on it. We're kind of working as a team through investigatory routes to find out who the fuck this woman is. Because she's not who she says she is. So how much of it is real? She doesn't work with the police. She doesn't work with the prison. She doesn't work with the military. She doesn't have Pet BC regulated bodies behind her. She doesn't have ASAB behind her. So these are now all governing bodies that she lists on her website that have nothing to do with her. So the next one to look at was MSC, 
while I went to look at MSc, MSc for those that don't know is Masters of Science. Um, it's the degree after the bachelor's. So you do three years of bachelor's and then one or two years of master's and then three or four years of PhD. Um, it's the second highest degree. So I went to look at MSc. Meanwhile, my client messaged her and said, I want the dog back. And she's like, the dog is now even more unsafe than it was before because we've been training with the military, doing bite work. Uh, what do you think I've been doing all night? I've been up training this dog. He's been on bite sleeves uh, all afternoon with the military. Blah, blah, fucking bullshit. I've changed his microchip. She has not. Um, you can't have the dog back. End X. Also, quick side point. She gave the client um, diazepam. Distribution of Class C substances, that is. Fraudulent activity by deception, theft by deception. The list goes on. So I'm studying, I'm trying to find out where this MSC is. Um, I go to her profile, started studying Master of Science at Edinburgh University in animal psychology. I'm like, cool. It's a legit degree, no problem. Went to Edinburgh University, no such degree exists. So I contacted Edinburgh University. Never heard of it. No Masters of Science. So, falsifi falsifying her Masters degree as well. Fuck. Just gets better, doesn't it? So at this point, my client is in major flat mode. And we will resume after I've got fuel. So, van is fueled up. We find out all these qualifications are fake. All of them. Like literally fucking everything. Um, None of these governing bodies have ever heard of her. The university hasn't heard of her. So I sent a message out to McQueen Vets, who recommended her to my client, and said, do you know you're recommending someone that's uh, committing fraud? And they declined to respond, so I messaged them again, said I suggest you would respond because we're about to put a public notice out. They did respond. They said, we'll look into it tomorrow, being today, Monday. Um, so from there, we put a public notice out on Sunday. Um, it's had over a thousand shares now. It is officially viral. It's all over Facebook. Um, and the comments are what we're interested in next. Because this woman has done this before. Charging someone £4,000 for puppy training. Um, threatening to use bailiffs for an outstanding bill to someone. The bottom line is... There is currently now a criminal investigation going on. Um, we'll be witnessing to the police. Our expert witnesses will be witnessing as well. The guys from the um, vet court, the guys from the police, the guys who supplied to the police, me, other trainers, we'll all testify. The bottom line is this woman's potentially looking at jail time. Um, so if you see Gemma Sankey kicking around and she wants to train your dog, avoid like the fucking plague. <sighs> Headaches. Headaches galore. Um, the dog's still not back with its owner. She's still refusing to hand over custody of the dog. She did try and get it microchipped today at a different vet's. Um, the dog's been reported stolen. The vets were notified. There was a tip-off of where she was going. Um, the dog never arrived there. So currently, it's reported stolen. The second its ship flags up, it will be seized by um, either a veterinary surgeon or the police, whoever's present at the time. Beyond that, I'm not sure what the next moves are. But I wanted to put this out there to expose Gemma Sankey as a massive fucking fraud. It's horrendous. What she's doing to people, she's preying on victims, taking these dogs and then selling them off. Um, it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. It's horrendous business practice. Like, it's as bad as it gets. It baffles me. So when you're looking for a trainer, guys, be careful who, who you pick. You know, it's, it's very easy for someone to write MSC on their website. Where are the certifications? Where's their work behind that? You know, if you if you want to ask anyone with a qualification, they can probably show you, leave your arch files full of their academic papers, their published numbers, um, all of that jazz. It's all part of part and parcel of it. And this leads us on nicely to tomorrow's vlog, actually. Um, I'm going to be announcing something. Tomorrow's vlog, as in tomorrow's filming. It'll probably be out in a few days. So, be careful who you use. Um, like I say, there's a very, very good chance she'll now go to prison. Um, there's been other testifying witnesses that have fallen victim to this. They're contacting the police. The crime number is being distributed around. So now it's just a waiting game. Um, 
a waiting game for them to gather their sufficient evidence um, and take action that way. But it'll definitely go to small claims court. You definitely won't train another dog. Like I say, it's, it's had over a thousand shares, probably reached a I don't know, quarter of a million people. All of the dog world are aware, all of the prisons are aware, all of the police services are aware, the military's aware. Um, the military are probably going to conduct their own investigation as well. Um, we'll see how it goes, but just be fucking careful who you let train your dog. That's the final stop done. Unfortunately, my delightful Rottweiler, whilst uh, on our way to pets at home, I brought him with me so I could keep, keep him monitored because he, he just trashed his cone. Um, it was still on, but it was popping off really easy. Um, they basically like you pinch on. There's these little, I don't know, friction fit grub things. You know, they just pop through the hole and then expand on the other side. That's the idea. But he's fucking trashed it beyond repair. So it was still on, but it was easy to get off. I pulled up a pets at home, opened the door, chewed himself to pieces again. So I'm gonna wrap him in duct tape. I'm not really. Um, I'm going to wrap his cone in duct tape though. He's not getting this cone off and it's staying on. None of this fucking having it off for the evening bullshit. Boy's going to go through some hell now. Because I need to get this fixed. It's not fair on him. He's in pain. He was growling at me last night for going near his cage. He's in pain. Um, so I've also um, spoken, well, emailed my vet because he's currently in surgery, so I can't call him. So I've, uh, I spoke to the receptionist and said, can you get him to check his personal emails when he comes out, please? Um, to see if he'll prescribe some steroids to take the inflammation out and some antibiotics to make sure if there is any infection in there, it doesn't get worse. It's not bad at, mo at the moment at all. Um, it'll be far more annoying than painful. It will be sore, don't get me wrong. You know, if I went and poked my finger into it, it would be sore. Hot spots are sore. Um, they feel like burns. So he will be sore, but he's not hes not in any excessive pain by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the itching. The, the reason they, that they keep chewing them open is because as the scab forms, they itch and then headache. So I'm going to go home, pull that cone off his head, wrap it in this, ram it back on his head, and it will stay there probably for at least a week. Hot spots, guys, are headaches. This is the second one I've ever had in my life. Um, Rotties are really, really prone to them. There's not a lot you can do. Um, moisture gathers under the fur. Generally, they start because there's there's some kind of break in the skin. So an insect bite, they get scratched by a thorn, another dog catches them. You know, life stuff. Tiny, tiny breaks in the skin. Like I say, insect bite is the leading cause. Um, so then said insect bite or thorn or whatever, they, they're itching it which causes more break in the skin, which causes the infection to sit under the epidermis, the top layer of the skin, um, or the dermis, one of the two. It, it never spreads any further than that. There's no long-term effects from hotspots, even the really, really nasty ones. Like if you Google them, hotspots or canine wet eczema, um, which again is nothing to do with eczema, by the way. <laughs> if you Google them, you see some really nasty ones. They never cause any lasting damage. So if your dog's got one, Yes, it needs seen to. Yes, it needs sorting. Um, generally, the, the treatment would be to clean the area and shave the area, whack a cone on them for a few days. It dries out real fast. Um, Flax not going to let somebody shave that right now because it fucking hurts. It's just going to bite their face off. So we have to battle for a bit longer just because he's a knob. Um, but this is part and parcel of owning, owning a serious working dog, you know. If this was Khaleesi, I could shave it. I'd grab her, pin her down, shave it. She would hate it, she'd growl at me, she'd snarl at me. Flack would literally put me in hospital if I did that. Um, so when you're looking at buying a working dog, you've got to think about these things. Take them into account. I'm gonna wrap the vlog up here. I've got to go back, um, print some stuff off, and then get on. Um, I'm probably gonna start the next vlog straight after this because it, it's a completely separate topic. So treat your dog's hotspots, wrap the cones in duct tape, don't employ Gemma Sankey because she's a fraudulent bastard. Um, and I'll give you any updates as we go on. Also, the link to the full the full write-up about this um, that JC did is...